Recently, we confirmed that the temporal inverted ILM flap technique is as efficacious as the original technique. Uncommon macular holes and how to treat them. The temporal inverted internal limiting membrane flap technique is performed here in a case of a macular hole persisting five years after successful retinal detachment surgery was performed elsewhere, consisting of vitrectomy, lentectomy, silicon oil injection and removal, and sclerofixated intraocular lens implantation. Due to a lack of lens diaphragm, fluid air exchange was performed through an air bubble in the anterior chamber. Closure of the macular hole and improvement in visual acuity were achieved. In another example, this macular hole persisted after vitrectomy had been performed for regmatogenous retinal detachment. The temporal inverted ILM flap technique was performed. The macular hole was closed and visual acuity improved initially to 0.2 after 5 months and finally to 0.7 after 8 months follow up. Macular holes are rarely observed in cases of diabetic retinopathy. The first example shows a macular hole in the course of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The temporal inverted ILM flap technique is performed. The macular hole was closed and visual acuity improved initially to 0.4 but subsequently decreased to 0.2 as macular edema increased. Here is a macular hole in proliferative diabetic retinopathy covered with vitreous without traction. After surgery we see closure of the macular hole despite the presence of subretinal fluid which completely disappeared after 12 months of follow-up. Visual acuity improvement is limited because of impaired photoreceptor status. In another similar case, after removal of epiretinal proliferations, the macular hole is closed with the temporal inverted internal limiting membrane flap. A continuing decrease of subretinal fluid was observed during follow-up. Visual acuity improvement is limited. No traction, prolonged subretinal fluid and photoreceptor defects may suggest these macular holes were caused by a lack of nutrition. In myopic macular hole retinal detachment, we initially try to remove subretinal fluid as much as possible without touching the margins of the macular hole. The temporal inverted ILM flap technique follows. Similar to what we see in proliferative diabetic retinopathy, subretinal fluid absorption may be delayed. This may also be caused by impaired function of retinal pigment epithelium and choroid. Visual acuity improvement may also be limited in certain cases. Our next example shows the technique in a case of advanced soft drusen and macular hole. The macular hole is closed and excellent visual acuity recovery follows. Traumatic macular holes with subretinal fibrosis present an additional challenge for surgical repair. The temporal inverted ILM flap technique may be used in such cases.
the macula hole was closed and visual acuity improved. Another example shows an extremely large post-traumatic macular hole with subretinal fibrosis. The inverted ILM flap technique allowed us to close this macular hole. Improvement of visual acuity was achieved. Now we show the surgical technique in a case of a macular hole associated with retinitis pigmentosa. The sponge-like appearance of the ILM seems to be different from other cases. The macular hole was closed and visual acuity improved. The presented technique may also successfully be used for macular holes associated with Coates disease. In this case, posterior hyaloid detachment seems to be very difficult. Conclusions The inverted internal limiting membrane flap technique may be successfully used in a variety of challenging macular hole cases. In special cases such as myopic macular hole retinal detachment and proliferative diabetic retinopathy, despite closure of the macular hole with an ILM flap, Subretinal fluid absorption may take several months, which may be explained by impaired nutrition from the choroid and insufficiency of retinal pigment epithelium.